Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you I love your precious heart. I I was standing, you were there to welcome the light in, and they could never tear us apart. Voting for Dukakis. Hmm. Well, maybe when you have children of your own who need braces, you can't afford them because half of your husband's paycheck goes to the federal government. You'll uh, regret that. My decision. husband's paycheck? <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway, I'm not going to squeeze one out until I'm like 30. Will you still be working at the yarn barn? Because I hear that's a really great place to raise children. That's really funny. No, I think a year of partying's enough. She'll be going to Harvard next fall. Mom, I haven't even gotten in yet. Do you honestly think Michael Dukakis will provide for this country till you're ready to squeeze one out? Yeah, I do. Hmm. When can I squeeze one out? Not until eighth grade. Excuse me. Donnie, you're such a dick. <laughs> Whoa, Elizabeth. A little hostile there. Maybe you should be the one in therapy, then Mom and Dad can pay someone $200 an hour to listen to all your thoughts, so we don't have to. Okay. Do you want to tell Mom and Dad why you stopped taking your medication? You're such a fuck-ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> Please. Did you just call me a fuck-ass? Elizabeth, that's enough. You can go suck a fuck. Oh, please tell me, Elizabeth, how exactly does one suck a fuck? <laughs> you want me to tell you? Please tell me. We will not have this <laughs> at the dinner table. Stop. Fuck. <laughs> What's the fuck, ass? <laughs> your office to be with you. What? How did you know? I didn't know it was such a big deal. It is a big deal. I'm reading. Get out of my room. Where do you go at night? You just get out of my room. Did you toilet paper the Johnson's house? Is that what you came in here to ask me? No. I stopped rolling houses in the sixth grade, Mom. What happened to my son? I don't recognize this person today. Then why don't you start taking the goddamn pills? <laughs> Bitch. Her son just called me a bitch. You're not a bitch. You're 
you're bitching. But you're not a bitch. I want to be a president of the United States who makes sure that we never again do business with a drug running Panamanian dictator, that we never again funnel aid to the countries who convicted drug dealers. Values begin at the top. Those are the values I want to bring to the presidency and to the White House beginning in January of 1989. Panama is a friendly country. I went down there and talked to the president of Panama about cleaning up their money laundering. Mr. Noriega was there, but there was no evidence at that time. And when the evidence was there, we indicted him. Wake up. I've been watching you. Come closer. Closer. Twenty-eight days, six hours, forty-two minutes, twelve seconds. That is when the world will end.
Son. Son. Tiny Darko? Tiny Darko? What the heck's going on here? Who is it, Don? It's Eddie Darko's kid. I'm sorry about this, Jimmy. He's just a neighborhood kid. He's... Guess he was sleep golfing? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that drool spot. <laughs> Are you all right, son? So, uh, let's stay off the links at night, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Fisher, but I don't have any drugs. Let's go. Mm hmm. for you to stay in a hotel, get some sleep, and we will take care of things here. All right. Thank you. Kids, come on, we're going to hotel. <laughs> they don't know where it came from. money from this can we get on television if we sue the airline shut up Sam why do I have to sleep with Donnie he stinks when you fall asleep tonight I'm gonna fart in your face I'm telling you, mom Samantha don't go over there Frankie Fiedler You remember, from high school. Mm. Mm. He died. Remember? Mm -hmm. On his way to the prom. They said he was doomed. saying the same thing about Donnie. Our Donnie. But he dodged it. He dodged his bullet rods. Hmm. 
somebody was watching over. Farmer will bring you home after practice. Johnny, bye, honey. Johnny. Good luck. Oh my God. Okay, tell me everything. You're not allowed to talk about it. Oh my God. Hi, Sharita. Shut up. Dog go cheap, dead. Huh? You're like a celebrity, man. I've been like calling you like a jillion times. Where you been? We well, stayed at a hotel. Hey, uh, my dad said he saw you at the golf course. You sleepwalking again, now, buddy? I don't want to talk about it. And now that you're famous, you gotta have a smoke. What happens if you tell mom and dad about this, Sam? They'll put Ariel in the garbage disposal. God damn right I will. So, Brody. Hey, Sharita. You want a cigarette? Shut up! Shut up! Go back to China, bitch. <laughs> Just leave her alone. Some good shit, huh? It's a fucking cigarette. in the papers. Even the grown-up gangs who ran the betting at the all-in wrestling and the Barrow Boys would hear with respect of how old Misery's house had been destroyed. It was as though this plan had been with him all his life, pondered through the seasons, now in his 15th year, crystallized with the pain of puberty. What is Graham Greene trying to communicate with this passage? Why did the children break into Old Misery's house? Joni? They wanted to rob him. Joni, if you had actually read the short story, which at a whopping 13 <laughs> pages would have kept you up all night, you would know that the children find a great Suck. deal of money in the mattress, but they burn it. Donnie Darko, perhaps with your recent brush with mass destruction, you can give us your opinion. Well, they say it right when they flood the house and they tear it to shreds that, like, uh, destruction is a form of creation, so the fact that they burn the money is ironic. 
They just want to see what happens when they tear the world apart. They want to change things. May we help you? Yeah, I just registered and they put me in the wrong English class. You look like you belong here. Um, where do I sit? Sit next to the boy you think is the cutest. Oh. Quiet! Oh my god. <laughs> Better choose. Joni, get up. say it'll take about a week to fix the roof. Damn dear, I better not fuck us on the shingle patch. You still don't know? No what? Where it came from. Oh, no. Apparently they can't tell us what happened yet. Something about a, a matching serial number that got burned. I had to sign a form saying I wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> so we're not supposed to tell anyone what nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> but you tell, uh... What, what's your doctor's name? Dr. Thurman, Dad. Yes. You tell Dr. Thurman whatever you want. Dad. What? Dad! Oh! <laughs> what's that woman doing standing out in the middle of the damn road? today, maybe tomorrow. Well, what'd she say to you? I met a new friend. Real or imaginary? Imaginary. Would you like to talk about this friend? Frank. Frank. What did Frank say? He said to follow him. Follow him? Where? Into the future. And then what happens? And then he said... Then he said that the world was coming to an end. <laughs> Do you think the world is coming to an end? No. That's stupid. For my entire life, I was a victim of my own fear. Love. I was feeding fear with food. Fear. Finally, I looked in the mirror. Not just in the mirror. I looked through the mirror. And in that image, I saw my ego reflection. For two years, I thought it was normal for a 10-year-old to wet the bed. We tried everything. But the solution was there all the time. I'm not afraid anymore! All over America, 
people have come together to join hands. People who believe that human life is absolutely too important, too valuable, and too precious to be controlled by fear. Pay close attention. You could miss something. Hello. My name is Jim Cunningham, and welcome to Controlling Fear. into a world of strange and beautiful magic. Wow. The Come Last me. Unicorn by Samantha Darko. There was back. once a unicorn named Ariel. Tommy. He's wrinkled it. It's not wrinkled, Sam. Just, hey. you know, flattening in the book or something. It's almost 7.45. The bus should have been here like 20 minutes ago. Maybe Martha Moo finally went nuts and hijacked the bus. And you know, there's like this rule. At 7.45, we get to go home. There's no rule. Charita, you should go home. Yeah. Yeah, if you're still here and the bus comes, we're all gonna get in trouble. Shut up. Yeah, Dad. Hey, porky pig. <laughs> I hope you get molested. <laughs> Mama said the school is closed today because it's flooded. No way. Yeah. Holy shit, that's the best news I've ever heard. My God, is this ever going to stop? Eventually, yes, it will. But right now, I got 12 classrooms full of water, all coming from a busted water main. What else? What else? Principal Cole, I'll show you what else. How did this happen? I heard a cat burglar broke in and trashed everything. And the mob girl got his head cut off. <laughs> True. Beth's mom said the boys' locker room was flooded and they found feces everywhere. What are feces? Baby mice. I like your boobs. <laughs> hey. Hey. School is canceled. Do you want to walk me home? Sure. Don't look so freaked. I'm not. You should check your backpack. Those guys have to steal shit. No. Fuck them. So, why'd you move here? My parents got a divorce. My mom had to get a restraining order against my stepdad. He has emotional problems. Oh, I have those too. What kind of emotional problems does your dad have? He stabbed my mom four times in the chest. Oh. Did he go to jail? No, he fled. They still can't find him. But my mom and I had to change our names. And uh, I thought Gretchen Ross was really cool. Yeah, I was in jail once. I mean, I, I accidentally burned down this house. I mean, it was abandoned, but still, I, you know, got held back in school. And can't drive till I'm 21, you know. But I'm over all that. I, I, 
I'm painting and stuff, and writing. I want to be a writer, or maybe a painter, I don't know, maybe both. I'll write a book and draw the pictures. Then maybe people understand me. I don't know, change names. Johnny Darko. What the hell kind of name is that? It's like some sort of superhero or something. What makes you think I'm not? Look, I should go. For physics, Montanoff is having me write this essay. The greatest invention ever to benefit mankind. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's Monotov, but that's easy. Antiseptics. Like the whole sanitation thing, Joseph Lister, 1895. Before antiseptics, there was no sanitation, especially in medicine. You mean soap? Well, I'm really glad school was flooded today. Why is that? Because you and I never had this conversation. You're weird. Sorry. You know, that was a compliment. Well, look, um... I, you want to go with me? <laughs> Where do you want to go? I mean, like, go with me, like, you know, like, that's what we call it here. Go in together. Sure. Okay, hey, where are you going? I'm going home. I'd like to try something new this time. Have you ever been hypnotized? No. And when I clap my hands twice, you will wake up. Do you understand? Yes. So, tell me about your week. I met a girl. What is her name? Gretchen. We're going together now. Do you still think about girls a lot? Yeah. How are things going at school? I think about girls a lot. I asked you about school, Donnie. I think about fucking a lot during school. What else do you think about during school? I'm married with children. You think about your family? I just turn down the volume and think about fucking Christina Appleby. I asked you about your family, Donnie. No. <laughs> I don't think about fucking my family. That's gross. I I'd like to hear about your friend, Frank. Hey, you fuck. 
Did you tell him that I flooded the school? I didn't say shit. Yeah, well, that's not what I heard. They think I did it. Yeah, well, if you're innocent, then you have nothing to worry about, right? Fuck yeah! You know what I think? I think you did it. <coughs> Beer and pussy. That's all I need. So we gotta find ourselves a Smurfette. Smurfette? Mm-hmm. Not some, like, tight-ass middle-sex chick, you know? Like this cute little blonde that'll get down and dirty with the guys. Like Smurfette does. Smurfette doesn't fuck. That's bullshit. Smurfette fucks all the other Smurfs. Why do you think Papa Smurf made her? It's because all the other Smurfs were getting too horny. No, 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 not Vanity. I heard he was a homosexual. Okay, well, you know what? Then she fucks them while Vanity watches, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, what about Papa Smurf? I mean, he must get into the action. Yeah, what he does, he films the gangbang. Later on, he beats off to the tape. First of all, Papa Smurf didn't create Smurfette. Gargamel did. She was sent in as Gargamel's evil spy with the intention of destroying the Smurf village. But the overwhelming goodness of the Smurf way of life transformed her. And as for the whole gangbang scenario, <laughs> I, it just couldn't happen. Smurfs are asexual. They, they don't even have reproductive organs under those little white pants. This was so illogical, you know, about being a Smurf. You know, what's the point of living if you don't have a dick? Damn it, Donnie. Why, why do you gotta get so smart on us? Grandma Dad. I hate that Miss Farmer. I'm such a fucking bitch. Yeah. How old is Grandma Death? 101. Hmm. She does the same thing every day. Just walks back and forth and back and forth to the mailbox. Nothing ever in there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. She goes, she's oh. going back to the box. We may still have mail. Mail, mail, mail. Here it is, and this oh. could be it. Oh! Oh, no dice, oh. Grandma. No, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Uh, someone ought to write that bitch. <laughs> yeah. Authorities continued their search today for a suspect in the Middlesex Ridge School vandalism. The private school has asked for public donations to help restore its beloved mascot, known only as the Monk. In other news, There's a good turnout tonight. What are you trying to accomplish here? There was urine and feces flooded in my office. Whatever fits. In cooperation with the county police, we have begun an active investigation into the cause of the flooding, and our suspects include several of our own students. Now, I it, want to know why this filth is being taught to our children. Kitty, I would appreciate if you would wait. Dr. We'll Cole, not only am I a teacher, but I am also a parent of a middle sex child. Therefore, I am the only person here who transcends the parent-teacher bridge. Don't worry. You got away with it. I have in my hand Graham Greene's The Destructors. This short story is part of my daughter's English assignment. In this story, several children destroy an elderly man's house from inside out. How can you do that? 
do there? <laughs> and how do they do this? They flood the house by breaking through a water main. I can do anything I want. And so can you. And I think that this garbage should be removed. Excuse me. What is the real issue here? The PTA doesn't ban books. The PTA is here to acknowledge that pornography is being taught in our curriculum. It's meant to be ironic. Excuse me. You need to go back to grad school. Why are you making for the school? They are in great danger. Kitty, you even know who Graham Greene is. I think we have all seen Bonanza. <laughs> well, um, while we are on other topics, where did you come from? Do you believe in time travel? Who are you talking to? I was just taking my pills in. A storm is coming, Frank says. A storm that will swallow the children. And I will deliver them from the kingdom of pain. I'll deliver the children back to their doorsteps. I'll send the monsters back to the underground. I'll send them back to a place where no one else can see them. Except for me. Because I am Donnie Darko. Who's Frank? A six foot tall bunny rabbit. <laughs> In these modern times, our attitudinal beliefs are so delicate, so fragile. I have had a cunning vision. This vision has released me. It's important that our lifeline be rejuvenated so that we can breathe again. It's time to breathe. It is time to breathe. Thank you, Jim Cunningham. Thank you, Jim Cunningham. So now let us begin lifeline exercise number one. Please press stop now. As you can see, the lifeline is divided into two polar extremes, fear and love. Fear is in the negative energy spectrum, and love is in the positive energy spectrum. Oh, duh. <laughs> Excuse me? No, duh is a product of fear. Now, on each card is a character dilemma which applies to the lifeline. Please take this. Thank you. Please read each character dilemma aloud and place an X on the lifeline in the appropriate place. Sharita? Juanita has an important math test today. She has known about the test for several weeks but has not studied. In order to keep from failing her class, Wanting to decide that she will cheat on the math test. Good, good, very good. Uh, Mr. Darko. Uh, Ling Ling finds a wallet on the ground filled with money. She takes the wallet to the address on the driver's license but keeps the money inside the wallet. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Farmer, I don't get this. Just place an X on the lifeline in the appropriate place. 
No, I mean, I, I know what to do. I just, I don't get this. You can't just lump things into two categories. Things aren't that simple. The lifeline is divided that way. Well, life isn't that simple. I mean, who cares if Ling Ling returns the wallet and keeps the money? It has nothing to do with either fear or love. Fear and love are the deepest of human emotions. Okay, but you're not listening to me. There are other things that need to be taken into account here, like the whole spectrum of human emotion. You can't just lump everything into these two categories and then just deny everything else. If you don't complete the assignment, you'll get a zero for the day. Donald, let me preface this by saying that your Iowa test scores are intimidating. So, let's go over this again. What exactly did you say to Ms. Farmer? I'll tell you what he said. He asked me to forcibly insert the lifeline exercise card into my anus. <laughs> cares about responsibility, morality, family values. Mm. Kitty, excuse us, please. <laughs> They've suspended him from after school activities for the next six months. Ever since this jet engine fiasco, I honestly don't know what's gotten into Rose, him. I'll tell you this, because our daughters have been on the dance team together for two years, and I respect you as a woman, but after witnessing your son's behavior this afternoon, I have significant doubts about your... Our paths through life must be righteous. I urge you to go home and look in the mirror and pray that your son doesn't succumb to the path of fear. <laughs> Wait, do you remember that weird gym teacher, Mrs. Farmer? Yeah. Okay, well, my brother told her to shove a book up her ass today. And then my parents just bought him all this new shit. Yeah, I know. I wish a jet engine would fall in my room. kind of weird, but, uh, do you, do you know anything about, uh, time travel? Ah, a wormhole with a no. blue sky and an ocean bridge, which is theoretically a wormhole in space controlled by man. So, according to Hawking, a wormhole may be able to provide a shortcut for jumping between two distant regions of space-time. So in order to travel back in time, you have to have a big spaceship or something that can travel faster than the speed of light. Theoretically. And be able to find one of these wormholes. The basic principles of time travel are there. You've got your vessel and your portal, and your vessel could be just about anything, most likely a spacecraft. Like a DeLorean. Metal craft of any kind. You know, I love that movie, the way they shot it. It's so, um, like futuristic, you know? Listen, um, don't tell anybody that I gave you this. The woman who wrote this used to teach here. She was a nun many years before that, but, uh, and overnight she just, uh, she became this entirely different person. She, uh, up and left the church. She wrote this book. She started teaching science right here at Middlesex. Philosophy of time travel. Roberta Sparrow? Roberta Sparrow.
It's called the philosophy of time travel. What does philosophy have to do with time travel? Let me see. I guess who wrote it? Who? A British barrel. Huh. She wrote a book. Grandma Death wrote a book. That's a terrible nickname. We almost hit her with the car the other day. Yeah, she lives up there in that piece of crap house, and you know she's loaded. She's. <laughs> You're right. She used to be known for her gem collection. Kids used to go up there all the time and try to steal stuff from her. She became a total recluse. <laughs> I didn't know she was alive till we damn near knocked her down the other day. She was just standing there in the middle of the road, frozen. So I, I got out of the car and I walked over to see if she was okay. And she leaned over and whispered in my ear. What did she say? I mean, I think Frank wants me to go talk to her, you know, because the last time I saw him, he asked me if I knew about time travel. And she wrote a book about it, so they can't be like a coincidence, right? Donnie, what did Roberta Sparrow say to you? She said that every living creature on Earth dies alone. How did that make you feel? It reminded me of my dog, Callie. She died when I was eight, and she crawled underneath the, the porch. To die. To be alone. Do you feel alone right now? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to believe I'm not, but I just... I've just never seen any proof, so I... I just don't debate it anymore, you know? It's like I could spend my whole life debating it over and over again, weighing the pros and cons, and in the end, I still wouldn't have any proof, so I just... I just don't debate it anymore. <laughs> it's absurd. The search for God is absurd? It is if everyone dies alone. Does that scare you? I don't want to be alone. And so his tapes have made me realize that for the last 39 years, I have been prisoner of my own fear. Fear. Rose, you've got to meet this Jim Cunningham. I can't believe he's single. And it has been a disappointing night indeed for these Super Bowl champions. You're right, Dad. Coach Joe Gibbs is on the sidelines, water dripping off his glasses, but he's got to be thinking, what happened? What went wrong tonight? And here's the kick. Oh! Quarterback. Miracle. We need to go for a safety. And so what the future holds for this Super Bowl MVP, we're just gonna have to wait and see. You guys want anything? By the way, this week on a special Who's the Boss, starring Tony Danza and Judith Light, Samantha borrows Tony's van. He gets caught without a license. Well, we'll get to make sure we don't miss that one, huh? Here we are again. Work down now.
Okay, let's not forget tomorrow we're meeting with our partners at the Young Inventors Fair. What happened to your neck? The blood on your neck. What are we going to uh, invent? And what if you could go back in time and take all those hours of pain and darkness and replace them with something better? Like images or what? Yeah, like a Hawaiian sunset or you know, the Grand Canyon. Just things that can remind you of how beautiful the world is. You know, we've been going together for like two weeks. Yeah? Well, I, I, uh... I, I, you want to kiss me? What? Well, I, I, I'm sorry. Don't wait. I, I just... Well, I like I you a lot. I just wanted to be at a time when it... When what? When it reminds me just... Reminds you how beautiful the world can be. Yeah. And right now there's some fat guy over there staring at us. I don't think telling any woman to forcibly insert an object up her anus is something that should go without consequence. I think we should buy a remote there. I think we should get a divorce. Because you tell mom everything. No, I don't. <laughs> Let me see it. No, it's not finished. It's, it's okay, it's cool. <laughs> That's scary. What do you think? Thank you for seeing us at such a late notice. We've, we both felt that it was time for us to come in and, and discuss what I think is going on with your son. Yes. Um, well, he's, uh, uh, you know about his past, and he was suspended from school for insulting his gym teacher. Well, I'm not really sure that's a good example, Rosa. I think he had just caused insult. Uh, Rose, let me just lay out what I believe is happening here. Mm. Donnie's aggressive behavior, his increased detachment from reality, seemed to stem from his inability to cope with the forces in the world that he perceives to be threatening. Has he ever told you about his friend Frank? Frank? Yes, the giant bunny rabbit. What? I don't recall him ever having mentioned a rabbit. Donnie is experiencing what is commonly called a daylight hallucination. <laughs> This is a common occurrence among paranoid schizophrenics. What can we do? I would like to um, do more hypnotherapy and increase his medication. <laughs> Whatever will help him, really, is to... <laughs> it's 
why we're here. We just would like him to experience some relief. So, if you think that more medication will do that, then I think we should uh, give it a try. <laughs> It's complicated. Yeah. It's like a force, you know, in your brain that just sends you someplace. Do you go someplace familiar? <laughs> no, but I, actually, each time I keep waking up farther and farther from my house. It's scary. Donnie Dorco. I know. <laughs> Good morning, you mongrels. out there who were actually afraid to say good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Because entirely too many young men and women today are completely paralyzed by their fears. They surrender their bodies to the temptation and destruction of drugs, alcohol, and premarital sex. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story today. It's a heartbreakingly sad story about a young man whose life was completely destroyed by these instruments of fear. A young man searching for love in all the wrong places. His name was Frank. We're moving through time. What? Sweetheart, sweetheart, please. There's absolutely no reason to be embarrassed here. Many times we eat because we're afraid to face our ego reflection. All right? We find ourselves looking at the mirror rather than looking into and through the mirror. When we do that, we can finally see the reality of how beautiful we are. Thanks. Sure. Come on up here. Don't be afraid. Uh, how can I find out what I want to be when I grow up? Oh, that's a hard one. Well, what I need you to do is look deep inside of yourself, deep within your heart, and find what it is in the world that makes you feel love. Pure, unconditional love. And go to that. In your studies, in your athletics, in your relationships, go towards love. Thank you. Uh, come on up. Okay. Next. What do I do to learn how to fight? Son, violence is a product of fear. Learn to truly love yourself. Truly love yourself. And the world will be yours. Okay. Get yourself up here. All right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, how much are they paying you to be here? Excuse me? <laughs> what is your name, son? Gerald. Well, Gerald, I think you're afraid. Are you telling us this stuff so we can buy your book? Because I gotta tell you, if you are, that was some of the worst advice I ever heard. Oh. You see how sad this is? I want your sister to lose weight, tell her to get off the couch, stop eating Twinkies, and maybe go out for field hockey. You know what? No one ever knows what they want to be when they grow up. You know, it takes a little, little while to find that out. Right, Jim? And you. Yeah, you. You think you're some jerk shoving your head down the toilet. Well, you know what? Maybe you should lift some weights or uh, take a karate lesson, and the next time he tries to do it, you kick him in the balls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Son, 
Do you see this? Right? This is an anger prisoner, a textbook example prisoner. Do you see the fear of people? This boy is scared to death of the truth. Son, it breaks my heart to say this, but I believe you're a very troubled and confused young man. I believe you are searching for the answers in all the wrong places. You're right, actually. I am pretty, I'm, I'm pretty troubled and I'm, I'm pretty confused, but I, and I'm afraid, really, really afraid. Really afraid, but I, I, I think you're fucking antichrist. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing, you know? The man thinks he's telling the truth, and everything he says is just a fucking lie. Everything he says. Everyone thinks he's so rad. Shut. Everything he does, they're just gonna. Are you okay? <laughs> Sit down. Calm down. You ever heard of Grandma Death? Who? Philosophy of time travel. What is this? She wrote it. I'm... I've been seeing stuff. Like a lot of really messed up stuff. And there's, there are chapters in that book that describe the stuff I've been seeing, and it can't just be a coincidence. She's gotta be in here somewhere. She never leaves this house. Well, maybe she's asleep. Tony, look. Well, each vessel travels along a vector through space-time along its center of gravity. Like a sphere. I beg your pardon? Like, like a sphere that, that uh, comes out of your chest. Um, sure, yeah. And in order for the vessel to travel through time, it's got to find a portal, or in this case, a wormhole, or... Well, could these portals, um... Could these portals just appear uh, anywhere, anytime? I think that's highly unlikely. No, I think what you're talking about is um, an act of God. Well, if God controls time, then all time's predecided. I'm not following you. Look, every living thing follows along a set path. And if you could see your path or channel, then you could see into the future, right? Like, uh, that was a form of time travel. Well, you're, you're contradicting yourself, Donnie. If we were able to see our destinies manifest themselves visually, then we would be given a choice to betray our chosen destinies. And the mere fact that this, this choice exists would make all preformed destiny uh, come to an end. Not if you travel within God's channel. It gives me no pleasure to deny you the right to read one of the great writers of the 20th century, but 
Alas, I have not yet been elected queen of the universe, so I must obey the rules, and so will you. So, anyone seen in this school reading this book will be suspended. But not to worry. Someone has already pre-ordered a dozen copies at the Sarasota Mall bookstore. In Mr. Green's absence, we will now be reading another classic, Watership Down by Richard Adams. Maybe you and Frank can read this one together. They grow out of our chest, solar plexus. Just like she described in the book, the way they moved and they smelled, it's like, like they're workers. Assigned to each one of us, it's, they just, they're like liquid. You know, and I, I, fo I followed it into my parents' bedroom. What did you find? So we call them IMGs. Infant memory generators. Yeah, so the idea is that you buy these glasses for your infant and they wear them at night when they sleep. But inside the glasses are these slide photographs and each photograph is of something peaceful or beautiful, whatever the parents want to put inside. And what effect do you think that this would have on an infant? Well, the thing is nobody remembers their infancy and anyone who says they do is lying, so. We think this will help develop memory earlier in life. Yeah. And did you stop and think that maybe infants need darkness? That maybe darkness is part of their natural development? No. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. What if the parents, like, put in pictures of Satan? Or, like, dead people, crap like that? Is that what you'd show your kids? Uh, well, I mean, didn't your dad, like, stab your mom? <laughs> Get out. Gretchen! 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 I'm sorry about those guys.
you are that stupid funny suit. Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? Why do they call you Frank? Just the name of my father. And he's fallen for me. Frank? When's this gonna stop? You should already know that. Hmm. I want you to watch the movie screen. Now that was really something. Thank you, Sharita Chin, with Autumn Angel. And now the moment we've all been waiting for is here. It is my very distinct pleasure to introduce to you Emily Bates, Susie Bailey, Samantha Darko, Beth Farmer, and Joni James. They are Sparkle Motion.
long was I asleep for? Mm -hmm. Look what cat dragged in. How you doing, dummy? Your little sister was broken hearted that you missed her big show last night. Yeah. Hmm? I'm crazy. You're not crazy. I used to be crazy. But you're not crazy. Look, you're my only son. I know. And, no, no, hold it. I, I know I'm not the best communicator, but whatever happens to you, be honest. Tell the truth. Even if they do look at you funny. They will. But what you've got to understand, son, is that almost all of those people are full of shit. <laughs> They're all part of this great big conspiracy. Bullshit. And they're scared of people like you. Because those bullshitters know that you're smarter than all of them. <laughs> you know what you say to people like that? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Cunningham, who has become a recent celebrity for his books and motivational tapes, was arrested early oh my God. while golfing at the Sarasota Heights Country Club. Arson has not been ruled out as part of the cause of the fire. Oh my God. Now, a group of Cunning Vision employees Dad played golf led by self-proclaimed fear survivor Linda Connie vehemently denied the alleged link to a child pornography publishing circuit. In a mission statement, Connie attacked... I'm sorry, Karen. This is a progressive school, but we don't feel the methods you've undertaken here are appropriate. What exactly about my methods are inappropriate? I am sorry that you have failed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another appointment. You can finish out the week.
getting dark. I think we should get back to the burrow. Back to the burrow? It'll come there. Don't think it won't. It, <laughs> it's all around us. And now stop it, Fiverr. We, we, we've got to go away from here. When the other rabbits hear of Fiverr's vision, do they believe him? Why should we care? Because the rabbits are us, Donnie. But why should I mourn for a rabbit like it was human? Are you saying that the death of one species is less tragic than another? Of course. The rabbit's not like us. You know, it has no history books, no photographs, no knowledge of sorrow or regret. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Bomber. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I like rabbits and all. They're cute and they're horny. And if you're cute and you're horny, then you're probably happy that you don't know who you are or why you're even alive. You know, you just want to have sex as many times as possible before you die. I mean, I just don't see the point in crying over a dead rabbit. You know, who, who never even feared death to begin with. You're wrong. These rabbits can talk. They're the product of the author's imagination. And he cares for them, so we care for them. Otherwise, we've just missed the point. But aren't we forgetting about the miracle of storytelling? The day ex machina, the god machine? That's what saved the rabbits. No, it was ridiculous. I'll call you back. Rose. Kitty. Rose, I'm sure that you're aware of the horrible allegations against Jim Cunningham. I know. I saw it on TV, something about a kitty porn dungeon. Oh, please, please, don't use those words. It's obviously some kind of conspiracy to destroy an innocent man. And I have taken it upon myself to spearhead the Jim Cunningham defense campaign. Rose, I have to appear at his arraignment tomorrow morning. And as you know, the girls are scheduled to leave for Los Angeles in the morning. Now, as their coach, I was the obvious choice to chaperone them on their trip, but... But now, you can't go. Yes. Hmm. Now, believe me, of all the other mothers, I would never dream of asking you, but none of the other mothers are available to go. I don't know, Kitty. It's a bad weekend. Eddie's in New York. Rose, I don't know if you realize what an opportunity this is for our daughters. This has been a dream of Samantha's and, and all of ours for a long time. I made her lead dancer. Sometimes I doubt your commitment to Sparkle Motion. Elizabeth will be in charge. She'll drive you to therapy. And if you need anything, you promise me that you will call Dr. Thaler. How's it feel to have a wacko for a son? Feels wonderful. You guys are gonna win. I know it. So do I. 
Here's the keys to the Taurus. There's tons of food in the fridge, and I left money on the kitchen table. And please do not forget to go. You're going to miss your plane. Oh. I, I just, there's nothing broken in my brain. I know. Bye, Donnie. Hello, Donnie. It's Friday. Shouldn't you be off with your friends, scaring old people? What's going on? I don't know. It's a good question. Suffice to say, I'm no longer your English teacher. They fired me. That's bullshit. You're the only good teacher here. Thank you. What's cellar door? This famous linguist once said that of all the phrases in the English language, of all the endless combinations of words in all of history, that cellar door is the most beautiful. I want to talk about your past today. Oh. I want to talk about you and your parents. They didn't buy me what I wanted for Christmas. What did you want for Christmas that year? Hungry, hungry hippos. How did you feel being denied these hungry, hungry hippos? Regret. What else makes you feel regret? That I did it again. You did it again? I fled at my school and I burned out that pervert's house. <laughs> I only have a few days left before they catch me. Did Frank tell you to do these things? Well, I have to obey him. He saved my life. I have to obey him or I'll be left all alone. And then, and then I won't be able to figure out what this is all about. I won't be able to know his master plan. Do you mean God's master plan? Do you now believe in God? I have the power to build a time machine. How is that possible? How is time travel possible, Donnie? Time's up, Frank said. Well, when is this going to happen? Soon. Suddenly open up. There would be no law. 
there would be no rule. There would only be you and your memories. The choices you've made and the people you've touched. If this world were to end, there would only be you and him and no one else. <laughs> Stop taking your medication. They're placebos, just pills made out of water. Thank you. Tony. An atheist is someone who denies altogether the existence of God. You're an agnostic. An agnostic is someone who believes that there can be no proof of the existence of God, but does not deny a possibility that God exists. Goodbye, Dr. Thurman. going to Harvard. Hey, we should totally throw a party. I mean, mom and dad are gone, and like, it's Halloween carnival, we could totally get away with it. Okay. It has to be small, right? Eggs, water balloons, and a dozen rolls of toilet paper. I stole four beers from my dad. Well, we got a keg. Well, the keg beer is for pussies. Call me as soon as you get this message. Thank you. Hey. You okay? Mom's gone. Welcome in. was all messed up. But you... You should call the cops. Yeah, they said I should leave the house and that I should go to a safe place. I 
were just so scared. I'd keep thinking something awful was happening and it's my fucking stepdad down there. I know it. I guess some people are just born with tragedy in their blood. If you're there, please pick up. Oh well. Good news. The girls, they got three and a half stars, and they get to come back for the quarterfinals. Samantha was amazing. Anyway, um, you take the red eye back tonight. And we ought to arrive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll take the red eye back tonight. We should arrive around 8 30 in the morning. Um, I hope everything's. I hope everything's all right. I love you. Bye. No, it's Frank. Got it. His time is running out. We gotta go. here. Let's just forget about it. <laughs> Cellar door. What?
Dear Roberta Spiro, I've reached the end of your book and there's so many things that I need to ask you. Sometimes I'm afraid of what you might tell me. Sometimes I'm afraid that you'll tell me that this is not a work of fiction. I can only hope that the answers will come to me in my sleep. I hope that when the world comes to an end, I can breathe a sigh of relief because there will be so much to look forward to.
by dead ending. What was his name? Donnie. Donnie Darko. Hmm. Feel bad for his family. Yeah. Did you know him? No. 